Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be enjoying a war drama film based on true events entitled Soldier Boy. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins at a quiet riverside where Sergei Elshkov manages to climb up a tree and, after reaching the top, brags to his mom and older brother. Suddenly, the piece is disturbed when a plane makes a dive in their direction. Sergei then grabs his slingshot and imagines hitting the plane with pine cones and destroying them. It was actually a dream, and Sergei wakes up in the middle of the night when he hears a loud bang on the door. A lady barges in and is relieved to see the young boy alive. She tries to convince Sergei to come with her and act as his son since his mom and older brother were killed along with the partisans. But it was too late, crowd patrols were on the way to the house. The lady forces Sergei to escape through the window and run. As he runs away, many of the houses in the village are burned down. Sergei gets lost in the dark and misty forest. When morning came, he went by the river to hydrate, and after drinking his fill, he heard some men speaking in a foreign language. He runs to the closest tree to take cover just in time for three Nazi soldiers making their way down the river. The Germans then start a fire to cook some food. Meanwhile, Sergei sees a snake above his head but manages to stay quiet until the Nazis left. Later, Sergei continues to navigate through the forest. It's been days since he last ate and so when he saw some berries on the ground, he didn't hesitate to eat them. Then explosions blast in the background, surprising the young boy. Later, he starts seeing things and becomes paranoid that someone is lurking behind him. But Sergei stands tall and shouts behind him that he has a rifle. He continues to move on, but exhaustion gets the best of him. The next day, a couple of Russian scouts finds him and brings him to base. Commander Kuznetsov, who's in charge of that side of the front, explains to Sergei that they are on the same side and comforts him. Sergei, in response, introduces himself and shakes the commander's hand like how a much older person would. Everyone feels for the injured young boy and attends to him, giving him some grub and something to drink. Later, a medic named Katya applies medicine to Sergei's wounds. Each time she rubs some, he winces in pain, so Katya agrees to draw a tank to distract and please him. When the kid starts asking questions about the front, some of the injured soldier beside him answers him politely. Soon, Kuznetsov goes to the makeshift hospital to see the condition of his men and talk with Sergei. The innocent child shares in detail what he has to go through and then starts taking an interest in the commander's medals and pistol. After being given a chance to hold the commander's handgun, he then shows off the tank on his stomach. Moments later, when the commander is on the way to the front lines, Katya asks the commander's permission if they can let the child stay. She explains that they will all take care of him, and besides, with no family to go back to, he'll end up in an orphanage. But the commander declines the request, stating that the front lines aren't a place for a child. Some of the soldiers visit Sergei in the makeshift hospital from time to time. They even brought him a binocular and some apples as a present on one occasion. One evening, Katya shares with her fellow nurse that she can't sleep because she worries and thinks she'll never see Sergei again if they send him away. But she wasn't alone, some of the soldiers felt the same. They all keep on requesting the commander to let the boy stay since many of them have grown attached to Sergei and also keep their morale up. But the commander insists the boy should leave, and for good reasons, war isn't a place for a child. The next day, the Germans advance, but the Russians manage to hold off. After the intense firefight, a soldier waits to escort the child to the orphanage. Kuznetsov takes a seat and has a hard time breaking the news. Sergei realizes what's up and starts tearing up. The commander then hands the child a wooden pistol, and in gratitude, Sergei hugs him tight. The commander couldn't bear to let go of the child and changed his mind. He then asks Sergei if he wants to be his son. And, of course, the child answered yes. That night, the soldiers excitedly gathered a plan on how to make Sergei's military uniform. Meanwhile, Sergei dreams of memory from the past before the war. The whole family goes about their day in a carriage. By morning, the commander wakes Sergei and surprises him with a uniform. Not soon after wearing them, Sergei ran around the camp happily. The soldiers were just as happy to see the enthusiastic kid. But then, planes are seen overhead. The German bombardments kill the mood. The Russians spring into action and take Sergei into a foxhole in hopes of keeping him safe. After the bombing, the number of wounded increased. Sergei tries to look for the commander and Katya amidst the chaos. Still, since he couldn't find them, he tries to be helpful by giving water to the thirsty soldiers. While helping out, one of the soldiers requests Sergei to read a letter since he couldn't see. Sergei couldn't read either and made up a story about a cow. The blind soldier voices out that he doesn't have a cow, but the other injured soldier lets him continue and laughs it off. Eventually, other injured soldiers let the young child read their letters as well. Later, Kuznetsov sees Sergei sleeping on Katya's lap. The commander clearly has feelings for the beautiful nurse and tries to confess his feelings but gets tongue-tied. 
Then Sergei wakes up, prompting the commander to abort the confession mission for another day. The same day, Sergei pretends to shave. Two soldiers approach him and ask if it is for a date. But Sergei simply replied that soldiers don't go to dates. The following day, Sergei asks his father, the commander, if he has any errands for him. Kuznetsov orders him to deliver the letters to the front lines. Without hesitation, the young boy gets the letters and hands them over to the soldiers easing the tension. Subsequently, while playing around with his binoculars, he spots a suspicious leg among the hay. He then runs over to the soldiers having a meal to report it. At first, the soldiers didn't believe him, but they decided to check it out anyway. Sergei leads the way and instructs them where to find the enemies. It turns out he was correct, there were two krauts hiding by the hay. The Germans try to fight back, but the Russian overpowers them. During the confrontation, Sergei recovers a radio. Later, Kuznetsov learned of Sergei's achievement from his right-hand man. The commander is even more amazed at the child because Sergei didn't even utter a word about it. When the child enters the room, Kuznetsov excitedly shows Sergei his sealed adoption papers making the commander his legal father. He then insists that they should share the wonderful news with Katya. Sergei drags his father towards the woods and into the riverbank. But when they arrive, Katya is talking to another man with flowers in her hand. This gave Kuznetsov the wrong idea that she was into another man. When in fact, the man with Katya was actually courting her, but she turned him down. Sergei runs over to Katya, saving her from the awkward moment with the man, and tells her that Kuznetsov is nearby. Still, when they turned around, the commander was no longer there. Not soon after, another firefight broke out. Sergei tries to be involved in the front lines unnecessarily by delivering bullets. An old soldier tries to convince Sergei to get to safety, but the young child is rather stubborn. And so, the old man gives an order instead, and like a true soldier, Sergei follows the command and heads to safety. When Sergei reaches the commander's dugout, he notices that they have difficulty communicating with HQ. One of the soldiers notifies the commander that the phone lines might have been cut off. Sergei hears this and follows the line until he gets to a wounded soldier. Despite the danger, Sergei crawls toward the man and asks how to connect the cables. The soldier then teaches the young child before he breaths his last. After successfully connecting the lines, Kuznetsov reached HQ and called for reinforcements. Later that night, an older soldier talks to Sergei about the star constellations in the night sky. Somehow, it leads to a conversation about love. The naive child asks what love is like, and the old man explains that it's like a person is ill after being apart from a loved one. The very next day, Sergei runs over to Katya in the makeshift hospital. He tells her that the commander is ill and has a head time sleeping. Immediately, Katya runs over to the commander's place to help him. Meanwhile, Sergei slips out. Katya wakes Kuznetsov and asks how he is feeling. Kuznetsov then composes himself, replies that there's nothing wrong with him, and realizes that Sergei's little ploy was to get them together. After hearing that the commander's fine, Katya storms out, but Kuznetsov goes after her. In the momentary peace, Sergei goes up a tree fort with a branch in hand. He then looks at the camp using his binoculars and spots a dog. He then runs over to pet them. After saluting the dog trainer, he asks if he can ride the sled. The person in charge gives the young boy a chance. Eventually, the dogs come across a cat and start chasing it. One of the soldiers sees that Sergei is headed towards a minefield and goes after him using a tricycle. Luckily, the soldier makes it just in time, blocks the way, and hugs Sergei tight. At the same time, the commander catches up to Katya. He then tries to confess, but words aren't coming out right. But Katya knew what he was trying to say, and before she could give her reply, a soldier breaks the moment with letters from up top. After reading the letter, Kuznetsov tells Katya that they're setting off the next day. And just as ordered, the whole regiment marches towards their next assignment. Soon, they reach a village, and the commander and Sergei are invited inside a house. Sergei notices a peculiar frame on the floor. A man nonchalantly shares that it's from a German air bomb that didn't explode, so he just patched it up. The officers hear this and order everyone to evacuate the house so that they can defuse the bomb. While the men do their work, Sergei hangs out with the other local kids in petting a puppy. The soldiers manage to get the bomb out of the house, continuing to march toward their destination. On the way, the vehicle that Kuznetsov and Sergei are riding hits a mine, killing Kuznetsov's right-hand man immediately. Fortunately, Sergei and the commander make it out with minor injuries. Soon, they arrive at their destination. Kuznetsov meets with the general to give his report. Sergei enters the room, and after a brief exchange, the general is fascinated by the young boy's wits and soldierly attitude. The following day, the Kuznetsov regiment is given the high honor of bearing the guard's banner and the general pins a badge on Sergei's uniform. The whole company smiles at the young boy as he marches. Moments later, the Russians are attacked, and an artillery fire hits the trenches burying the commander. 
Sergei runs over to the others and informs them of Kuznetsov's situation. The soldiers then head towards the location to get their commander out of the debris. Kuznetsov survives the encounter. The movie ends with the regiment marching towards destination unknown. A narration states that the division becomes Sergei's family and follows them to every battle, even joining them in the Battle of Stalingrad and reaching as far as Poland. His legend as the youngest soldier lives on. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and to help the channel grow.